If you were to start selling on eBay today, how long would it take you to be able to generate one sale every single day? How many items would you need in store to be able to achieve this metric? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about all of that, and I'm also gonna show you the five steps that I would take to ensure that I could get to one sale a day as quick as possible. This is what I tried to do back when I first started selling on eBay. I try and create the streak, and I basically try and get seven sales in seven days. I was so frustrated when it didn't happen, but when it did, it motivated me so much to dive into the next week of work. So we're gonna try and do that for you today. I've got a lot of information to give. Let's get into it. Now, I'm gonna assume you've already made the big scary leap and you've started your eBay journey. But if you haven't, today's the day. Find that item lying around the house, create the account, but most importantly, create the momentum and get onto that first listing. Once you've done that, continue on with this video. So the first step in the process is something that I got wrong for a very, very long time. And that is sourcing the right product that actually goes on to sell on eBay. I'm gonna be going into this local thrift store now and I'm gonna be showing you examples of items that have a really nice average sale price and a strong sell through rate. And I'm also gonna be using the e-profit calculator to work out how much profit we can expect from this. By doing this little bit of research in these thrift stores, which I never did when I first started out, is gonna guarantee that we're gonna be making sales a whole lot more quicker than we used to. So let's go in and we'll try and find some stuff. All right, my guys, let's have a quick look here. I'm in the DVD section, which I absolutely love. You can find great items, and the first one I found for 50 cents is the Eagles. Let's jump into eBay and have a look. We've got about 70 results for listings that are active. These haven't sold, but we can use the filter button on the right-hand side, and we can check to see how many sales have actually come through in the last 90 days, and we can compare the two numbers. And here we go here. You'll see that there is a total of 27 sales, so 71 listed, 27 sold and the price points were about $30 listed but then the best sale is only 25 and when I scroll through these numbers it actually falls down to the low teens so from a value perspective $13 worth of an average sale price kind of rules it out Listen, I've got all this. Wow. 50 bucks a lot. Let's do it. No pick and no cheese and 50 bucks a lot. Done. Done? Done. Deal. Because yeah. it, it's just sitting in the office. Sight unseen. Sight unseen, okay? <laughs> I'll, get, I'll play around with it. Yeah? All right. Like, non-tested, I agree. Non-tested, yeah, but yeah. it's just coming like that. Is what it is. And I know my cameras, so yeah. I can't be bothered. I can't, I can't do it. That's fair. Okay. Oh, there's some cool stuff in here. Yep. Yeah. So this young man's going to get this for 50 a lot. Yeah, beautiful. So it's just sitting in the office. No, I appreciate yeah. it. I'll play around with it. You give us a good rap. Well, I will. Always. Thanks, heaps. I had to try and hide my excitement here a little bit, guys, because this is a huge come up. Just timing is everything. Came in at the right time and been able to grab all of this for $50. This should go on to do really, really well. Just to make it clear, I just never saved them for you. No, you right? didn't. Because I would, I didn't. They were just came in yesterday. And I went, can't be bothered. One hundred percent. Don't ever, yeah. And I'll be, I'll be yeah. saying that as well. It was just literally a timing thing. Yeah. Right place, right time. That, that's right. Yeah. But this sort of stuff is great though. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's awesome for me because the, the category does really well. Yeah, yeah, and I know it does, but I can't do that. It's the dirty, the... There's a lot of work you know, to there's it. there's a brownie in there. I know that. Yeah. I know that. But, yeah. You know? Nah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I've got another product example here. We've got the Burden Snowboard Boots. Now, these can go for some pretty decent money based on my past sales experience on this category, but I thought I'd jump into eBay and give you guys a bit of an update on the numbers. If we have a look at the sell-through rate, you'll see that they're selling about 70-odd listed, and then the sales, there's about 50 sales. So it's not quite our 100% sell-through rate, but for $10 in store with an average sale price of 100, well, I thought I should go ahead and do that. So I have picked those up and I'll show you how to list that up a little bit later in the video. I've got these books here as well. There's some hardcovers, uh, Australian at War. Um, I've gone into eBay and I've had a look at this and they were selling individually at their worst price for about $18.95. Uh, but there were some bundles of about two odd copies and they were selling for about $25 odd dollars. I've obviously got 15 hard-covered copies here, so I could look to try and sell this as a massive bundle. And there was an actual big bundle right at the very top of this listing um, that was going for about 160 odd dollars. So, you know, I think this is one that you could, probably could go get away with buying, but my issue with this one is the fact that it was gonna be a heavy postage cost. You have gotta think about postage when you're buying these items, so I left this behind. 
Now, that's only taken an hour, but we've been able to source some really great items. I mean, I could spend a lot more time out there continuing to source in other stores that I'm yet to go into, but for the sake of this video, that's actually all I need to do. I've got enough product to be able to work through the next remaining steps out of this video, and I think that's, well, a pretty big point to raise. I think a lot of beginners will just spend their entire days out thrifting because that's the fun stuff. And that's a long way to go towards not getting yourself a sale every single day, spending too much time doing the things that actually won't make you any money. In fact, you're actually spending money and you're losing money rather than making it. So there's a little bit of a tidbit piece of advice there. Just do what you need to do. Grab the amount of volume that you need to grab. Don't be excessive. And then get back home and actually put in the work to get the items sold. This is a pretty ridiculous grab. I wasn't anticipating that we were gonna find this opportunity out there today. This almost never happens, but an insane grab of vintage video cameras, all for $50. It doesn't really fit the discussion that we're talking about for today's video. There's a whole lot more that we could talk about these cameras, so I might save all of this for another day. Um, I'm pretty sure just before we continue that this F1 camera is probably gonna be the best one. Um, yeah, that's a beast. Comps are going for anywhere between 250 to 750. Big, big money on that one there. Um, but we are gonna go through these for the purpose of today's video. Now, before I go ahead and show you how I will list these snowboard boots up, I do wanna talk about step number two, which is knowing your numbers, or at least the numbers that I believe you would need to have to achieve a one sale a day eBay store. The ratio that we work off is one sale for every 100 active listings that you have in store. So theoretically, you would only need 100 active listings to be making one sale every single day. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, Matt, I do have well over 100 active listings and I'm not getting a sale every single day, um, that will come down to the sell-through rate. Everything that we just discussed in that thrift store, you were just unfortunately buying slower sell-through rate items and that was hindering your process to be able to achieve one sale every single day. So with a really poor sell-through rate store, you might need four, five, 600 items in your store to be able to achieve that one sale every single day. Hopefully that makes sense. The idea of getting a faster sell-through rate store with less items allows you to make quicker sales and you want to average out of that one sale per every 100 active listings. So I believe, given the fact that we won't be finding 100% sell-through rate items every single time we go out, as you saw in the thrift today, it was pretty tough to find 100% sell-through rate. Um, I think you're going to probably need, with a focus on sell-through rate, still about 200 active listings in your store to be able to generate a sale a day. So what I would do to be able to achieve that 200 item store, if you're starting from scratch, is I would actually go nice and slowly and I'd be listing up two sales or two listings uh, every single day into your store. Doing it correctly, really strategically looking at your title, your photos and your price point. Uh, and then just making sure you're consistent with two a day. You'd need to do this for 100 days and you'd build up to 200 active listings if you didn't make a sale. Um, so it is, it is gonna take you a little bit of time. You might be looking at about four months or so to build up to 200 active listings. But by that point, if you just stuck to the process of three to four months worth of consistent work, 14 listings going into your store every week, I believe with a focus on sell through rate, you would be getting one sale every single day. So they're the numbers, they're the numbers that I believe would work, they're the numbers that I would attack if I was just starting from scratch and I wanted to get a sale a day on eBay. So hopefully that can be something that you put down as a bit of a blueprint, put it on the whiteboard, attack it for three to four months and let me know how you go. And I did kind of touch on point number three there, which was to list consistently. That is actually the most significant thing that you can be doing. Once you've got those good items, it is then a setup of just doing those two items every single day. I wouldn't be putting 14 up in one listing session and then not listing for six days or being sporadic with every second or third day putting up some listings. I'd jump straight into it every single day. I'd actually do that, that scheduled listing process where you're putting two to go live every single day at 9am for instance. Um, that way the algorithm's going to think that you're there listing your stock up every day, but really you're not. You've just done it in one or two listing sessions, but you've just scheduled it out. Um, the power of having consistent listings and streaking, we're talking about streaking sales every day. If you were to streak active listings going live every day, that alone would be able to see generation of sales every day as well for you. Um, a lot of people don't do it. Uh, a lot of people can't find the process and the rhythm and the routine to be able to have active listings going up every day. And that's ultimately why it hurts them not being able to sell items. So you've just got to find some form of lifestyle routine for you um, to be able to sure, to be able to make you list up that quantity every single day. Um, two a day is all you need and you need about three to four months. Which brings us on to step number four. 
the most crucial part of getting a sale today on eBay is listing your items up correctly from the sense of three main things. If I can teach you anything in today's video, there are only three things that get an item to sell on eBay and that is your price, your title and your photos. Your item specifics don't matter so much, your return policy doesn't matter so much. Basically nothing matters as much as those three things. When you're scrolling through the feed and people or customers are looking, they're going to want to have a, a great photo, a great cover photo. They're going to want to be enticed to click on your listing. To even get the listing found to begin with through SEO, you're going to need a great title so it shows up in that feed. And then finally, to get them to actually get over the line to purchase your item, you need to have an attractive price point. Everything else doesn't matter. So this is what I've got here, guys. I've got my listing up with these Burton Fiend Imprint, Imprint 3 Men's Snowboard Boots. I've got the screen grab up and the first thing that we're going to take a bit of a critique at here is my photos. Now, when it comes to photos, eBay requests at least six photos per listing, but don't really think about it from a sense of eBay requesting six photos. Think about what the customer might want. They would probably want to see every single aspect of this boot uh, to be comfortable to go ahead and ultimately make a purchase. So I always like to lead with this cover photo, which is just the shoe on the side. You, sh you see big companies like Nike, they do this sort of thing with their photo structure of shoes. So I like to copy that. Um, but as you can see, I've used the entirety of the image. I've, I'm in square mode feature. My aspect ratio is one and one. Um, so I've got the square shape photo and I'm trying to use up every single piece of real estate in this image. So I'm literally using all four corners and I'm going top to bottom on the item. So the item is as big as it possibly can be. It's in your face as much as it can be, which will ultimately get the click from the buyer. Um, I've taken uh, multiple shots here. So as you can see, I've taken a back shot. I've taken a 40 45 degree angle, one just front on, then I've got ahead and taken one that I do, which is an interior inside shot of the boot, plus a little bit of the uh, of the bottom of the boot, and then a complete overall look at the bottom, and then finally all of the sizing and dimensions. That's a pretty standard process when it comes to photo structure for me with shoes, and it generally does pretty well for me. If we go over here and we have a look at the way that I've structured out my title, this is another really important part for SEO. So search engine optimization, this is where the buyer jumps on and searches for what they're looking for, and then because you've got a great title, your item then shows up. So what I'm doing here with my title is I've got the Burton Fiend Imprint 3. That is just all the characteristics of the model that the boot is actually telling me. And that's the great thing with shoes. You don't really need to do too much research on Google. It kind of gives you all the information you need on the shoe, typically speaking. Certainly the case here with the, with the snowboard boot. I know that it's a Burton Fiend Imprint 3. I know that it's a men's snowboard boot. It's black, US size 9, and Sean White is an athlete that wears the Burton brand in snow boots. So Sean White being a really professional rider, I also like to put him in the title as well because somebody might want Sean White's boots. Um, so there you go. I've basically put in every single, there are no fluff words in there. There's no fluff terminology. There's no symbols. Don't be putting any symbols in there. And the other thing as well to uh, consider is there's no capital letters. There's no big, bold capital words, just capital letters at the front of the of the word, which is the most important thing. Um, eBay doesn't like it when you do big, bold capital letters. Um, and I've also I've also front-ended the most important information as well at the front. So I haven't said Sean White Burden Imprint 3 Fiend. I've said it's the Burton Fiend Imprint 3. That's the most important information. If somebody wanted that boot, they would find it immediately because that's the front of the title. And then from there, I use uh, the keyword snowboard boot. I also put in the gender. It's a men's. I'd say it's a size 9. I put the athlete and the color. There's really not too much more that you could put into that title. I've used 66 out of 80 characters, and that's pretty much all you need to get this one sold from a title perspective. Not sold, but at least found in search. Then the photos will hopefully do it justice. And then I've gone with the price point here of $99.95. I had a look when I was in store, and I noticed that the sell-through rate for this one had 70 active listings, but 50 sold listings. So it wasn't quite at 100% worth of a sell-through rate, but it's still pretty strong. There's enough sales in there to tell me that this one should move relatively quickly. We can make it even quicker by just slowly lowering our price point ever so slightly. So having a look at the different range of price points for these boots, they were going anywhere between 50 to 200 odd dollars. 
And I've gone with a fairly generous 99.95 because I'm comfortable to get that sale price considering I only bought it for $10. So taking into consideration your actual purchase price is very, very important. Now I understand with these boots, they're probably gonna ship off for about $20 worth of shipping. Um, so that's gonna bring it down to 80. I'm gonna pay $15 in fees. So that's gonna bring it down to 65. And then I'm gonna take off my $10 that I bought it for. So I'm gonna make about $55 in profit and I'm totally fine with that because we bought it for just the 10 bucks. Um, so price, title, photos. Yes, I've got all of the other information that you possibly need. I've got all of my item specifics dialed in. I've used an AI item description here in the, uh, in the description. So all the key information was just blasted in by the click of a button. And uh, yeah, that one's up and live and ready to go. But really, when it comes to creating it, those three focus areas that all you need to worry about. And ultimately, if I had to rank them in importance, I would say the price point, number one, number two, the title, and number three, the photos, but they all really, really matter. And then the final step is to go ahead and store them away. I've selected tub number 013. So I'm gonna put them in there, store them away for hopefully no more than maybe three to four weeks at most. And then hopefully I'll be jumping in there in a what sold video and showing you that they've sold for the full asking price. Now, this was just a really quick 15 minute tutorial on the way that I would go about starting from scratch and getting at least one eBay sale a day. But if you wanted to get into the real nitty gritty, well, I offer mentoring phone calls. So you could jump on a video call, we can critique your store, we can work through your first listings if that's the stage that you're at. Um, so if you are after any further assistance, feel free to get in touch. Link is in the description below for these mentoring calls. I'm doing about one a day and I'm absolutely loving the process of helping as many people as I can. So I'll leave you with this video here, guys. A tutorial, again, some more further information to help you with your eBay journey. Thanks for being here for this one. We'll see you over there.